Okay, so this should be the shortest video I've ever done. <laughs> Try and keep it as short as possible anyway. Now I see it a lot in um, forums and Facebook groups and stuff, people talking about the DR setting, the dynamic range setting built into the Fujifilm cameras. And it's in all of the cameras, I think. It's in all of the Fujifilm bodies. Now, it, more specifically, a lot of people seem to think that the DR 100 to 400 setting is only available when shooting JPEG. Now, if you don't know what the DR setting is, it's a bit like when you take a photo on your iPhone and then it's a really really high dynamic range set, um, environment setting so your camera will shoot in, in HDR mode to give you that extra dynamic range. Now there's a setting obviously you can have it set to auto in the Fujifilm camera but it does actually apply to RAW as well it's not just a JPEG only facility so if you do shoot RAW do check it out because it's worth giving it a go. For this test I've done a, a few shots I've taken a few pictures of this little Nikon and deliberately the same settings deliberately overexpose the top corner of the uh, camera only a bit overexpose it though and I've taken the same photograph same composition with the DR100 the DR200 and the DR400 in RAW only not shooting JPEG now on the X-T3 so just RAW so if you don't know where the DR um, settings are let's get rid of that you go into menu you go over to IQ, I've got mine in a, in a my menu thing there for video, but if you go to IQ and then down, you'll have a di di dynamic range uh, option there. Now, if I open that, at the minute I can see di dynamic range 100, 200 and 400. If I drop my ISO down, as I drop my ISO down, they all go down to 100. Okay, so you have to have a minimum of, I think, 324 dynamic range 200 and 640 for dynamic range 400. So it is ISO dependent, um, but it depends what you're shooting. All right? For this test, I've obviously left the camera at 800 ISO, so I can guarantee to get the 100, the 200, and the 400, and I've taken exactly the same exposure under those three different settings. And we're gonna have a look now in Lightroom and see if we can recover any detail different between the, the three RAW files. And then hopefully that'll prove, and that'll settle the argument as to whether or not you can actually shoot DR400 in RAW. Okay, in Lightroom now we've got the three RAW files. So the one on the left will be DR100, DR200, and DR400. I don't know if there's a way of in Lightroom actually seeing. I'd be interested to know if there is a way of telling that there's a difference. I don't think it does. No, take a word for it. So we've got the same exposures exactly. If we move over to the develop section, you can see that we've shot them all at ISO 800, uh, all at f4, and all at 0.6 of a second. Okay, so as we go through, you can see a slight shift in the histogram on the right hand side. Slight shift. Okay, so it looks like you can tell by the histogram that there's more detail in the last one than there is there. You can, you can see that just by looking at the histogram. What we're gonna do is we're gonna just get the first, we're gonna get the first photograph and I'm gonna drop the exposure just to see how much we've clipped. So we can see this area here above the camera, above the Nikon logo, that's all clipped, all, all this on the right hand side. In fact, if I reset and go up here and have a look, you can actually see the red, red blinkies, what's clipped in the photograph. So if I move over now to the next camera, the next photograph, you can see slightly less is clipped, and over to the third one, slightly less is clipped. So that is proof in itself that there is more dynamic range in the RAW file with the DR400. But let's go a step further than that just quickly. Let me, um, let me darken the exposure on that one. And then let me darken the highlights on that one and let me bring the whites down. So this is it's pretty much showing the, uh, yeah, bring the shadows down as well. So we can see pretty much what's, what's gone. We can see everything that's gone. Okay, so we copy those settings, move them over to that one, have a look at that one. We can see already between the two, there's more detail above the Nikon logo in DR200 than there was in DR100, and then over to DR400, which does not look to me like an overexposed photograph. You can see that DR100 is clipped completely over the Nikon logo and all down the right hand side. DR200, borderline okay. DR400, absolutely okay in my book. So the whole point of the DR. 1 to 400 setting is that you take control and it gives you more flexibility. But what this has taught me, and I wouldn't use, as I said, I wouldn't use this for photography, I'm more so for um, 
anything with high dynamic range on filming. So I'd use it more as a, a videographer's tool. But I would worry about the editing, editing the tones, a bit like editing a HDR photograph on your iPhone, it kind of looks flat. But this has actually taught me that there isn't, uh, there isn't actually a difference in the rest of the photograph as far as tones. Really, I don't think, don't think there's anything in DR100 that I couldn't achieve with DR200 than I couldn't achieve with DR400. So it actually tells me that shooting DR400 for street photography, which obviously would force you to be at a minimum of 800 ISO, which is no issue for those cameras anyway, but for holiday snaps and for general uh, run and gun out and about, DR400 might be the way to go. We might be shooting ourselves in the foot by just using DR100, or sorry, just using ISO 160 or just using ISO 200. Um, because the dynamic range and everything seems fantastic. There's no difference at 800. In fact, it might even be better at 800. Uh, we'll have to do another video on that. I haven't really got time on that one. If I copy those settings up there. So pushing the dynamic range, you know, let's copy that over to that one. That one. So we've got... So we're looking at the mid-tones there, just looking at this grip here where we've got this information here. Zoom in. It's out of focus, is it? I don't know why it's out of focus. I focused on the Nikon. So it stick forward a bit. Nikon thing sticks forward a bit. It's a bit annoying. So it doesn't look. I don't think it. I mean, I'm. I'm. I'm if I look up here by the Nikon logo, it's sharper. I, I can't see, and I've pushed the shadows right up way, way, way more than I'd ever do. So I've got to be honest, I can't see, for street photography, it might be the way to shoot. It might be the, the best thing to do, shooting at DR400. Anyway, i leave it there. I only wanted to do a quick video, guys, just so people knew that you can shoot DR100, 200, and 400 in RAW. So we're not shooting JPEG. These are RAW-only files, okay? Anyway, i better leave it there. Nice short video for you today. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you in another video soon. Take care, guys.